What's that like? What's going on, people? Hey, it's another edition of the What's That Like podcast, and I am your host, John Knowles. It is so good to be back. It's been so long since we've had an actual podcast. I think we got to go back to before Christmas when we did the kind of the Christmas toy wrap up. But even then, that was like a filler episode in between. I've had so much going on personally and professionally, been real busy with work. We had the Queen of Hearts going on that entire time. I know a lot of you tuned in for my Queen of Hearts broadcasts as well. That finally got drawn out on January the 5th, I believe it was, and, and we're on a little break from that. And I've also been home for a while. I had a little health issue. I'm kind of back to full strength and happy to get back to giving you guys what you want, and that's more podcasts to listen to. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit different. I've kind of always been a Central Illinois theme. This one I've branched out. I got a guy here from Florida. He goes by the name of Kenny the Pirate, and and Kenny the Pirate is an interesting story. I'm going to let him tell you what it's all about, why we call him Kenny the Pirate, why he calls himself Kenny the Pirate, I should say. It's a neat story that he's got, and the entire episode is going to be about Walt Disney World. I came across Kenny because he did a challenge that enabled him and his daughter, he completed the challenge to uh, to ride every single ride in Walt Disney World, all four parks in one day. I, I never even thought that was humanly possible, but Kenny figured out a way to do it, and we're going to hear all about that. And what makes Kenny really cool is he's got his own planning website. He's got a uh, He's got a character locator app that you can utilize to help in the parks, a lot of trip planning stuff. And he does a crowd counter. You'll hear all about that stuff. And he actually makes an exclusive announcement right here on the What's That Like podcast about a new business venture he's got. I'm so proud to have him on here for that. But uh, we'll get right to Kenny in, in a few minutes. want to thank you all for all of your support over the last uh, it, almost 10. I think it's about 10 months since we started the show. It's grown exponentially. We've got all different avenues that we're doing. We've got the traditional podcast that we started with. I do videos every now and then. We just did the, the Stamp Out Cancer video. We posted that last week. Unbelievable event. Uh, we had Zach Weigel on the show again back in, uh, in November to talk about Stamp Out Cancer. And I was able to go to the event this year and just blown away. You know, people think, well, we live in small towns and, you know, you can't have big time causes and make a big event and actually make anything work. Wrong. Totally wrong. I mean, I, I watch what those folks have done over in Montgomery County with Stamp Out Cancer, and I go, it's unbelievable how a community can come together and accomplish so many big things. Small towns and big-time dreams do come together. I want to thank those guys so much. Unbelievable, Zach and the entire Stamp Out Cancer uh, team over there, and great bunch of people. Their record year in terms of uh, what they raised for the Montgomery County Cancer Association, just unbelievable. Show's back, though. We've got a number of episodes coming up. I can't wait to bring them all to you. Uh, I'm getting back to what the core of this whole thing's about. Interesting people, interesting places, interesting events, things that you can do. It's all about that experience and you figuring out all these people that do cool things and what's that like. Uh, this episode is, is, of course, no different. As I said, Kenny the Pirate rode all 47 rides in Walt Disney World in one day. And let's get right at it and find out, what's that like? What was little Kenny like? Let's see. As a kid, I was really into sports. Uh, I loved bat baseball and football and running and playing in the dirt. Uh, video games when I was a little kid. My parents got us like Pong and Atari oh, yeah. and kind of dates myself a little there. <laughs> Um, but when I was a kid, I always watched those Walt Disney Sunday night shows. Absolutely. Yeah. And I thought he was still alive. You know, it was in the seventies, but I thought he was still alive. I didn't know he had passed away. And mm -hmm. I was just so fascinated with his idea of, you know, building this big, big land that you could go play in. And I was like, wow, that's some place I really want to go. And I would ask my parents and we would end up at Six Flags all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, where'd you grow up? In Alabama, near Birmingham. So you, which Six Flags would that have been? Yeah, it was you know, a couple hour trip from Birmingham over to Atlanta. Gotcha. Did that with a youth group some, did that with my parents some, but never had the chance until I got married to actually go to Disney World. And what year would that have been? 
1990. 1990. So I'll tell you a very similar story. I uh, grew up here. I'm in the St. Louis area. We have a Six Flags. I thought that mm-hmm. was it as well. Your your story mirrors almost mine. You'd go there every year for a little, you know, a trip or your mom and dad or take your whatever. And then again, it was 91, I think, was the first time I went to Disney World. And yeah, after that, nothing else is the same, is it? No, no. The the level of detail in Disney parks is way beyond anything you'd experience at any of the regional parks. Yeah. Well, uh, I said this as well. It's kind of neat that you're from St. Louis because I actually spent an entire summer in St. Louis doing some work on the inner city there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. familiar with the area, and uh, I, and it's uh, it's cold here right now. And, and you're in Florida <laughs> now, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's probably warm there. So I envy you. And everyone here it's envies a- you, too. It's a little chilly, but it's certainly not as cold as it would be in St. Louis. That's right. So um, you got into Disney, you know, 90. When did you move, make the move to Florida that uh, this kind of became a thing for you where you were close to the We to started the trekking back and forth with the kids in 2000. Well, really 2002, we did some day trips. And then in 2004, we started doing the vacation. Uh-huh. And from 2004 until about four and a half years ago, it was two, three four or more times a year okay. <laughs> from various places. We lived in Texas, Oklahoma, South Carolina, more recently in South Carolina, the job opportunity I had there kind of, kind of dried up and my wife and I and sat down with the kids and, Hey, where do you guys want to move? And <laughs> my kids said, why don't we move to Orlando? Then we can vacation somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Were you always a Disney world guy or was it Disneyland popped into that as well? Well, I was Disney world until Kenny, the pirate thing started. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned Kenny, the pirate. How did you get the name Kenny, the pirate? How did that become this name on the internet that people look up and everything? Isn't that funny? Cause it's, it started because I'm really bad at YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So in 2007, YouTube was relatively new, and Disney had a contest called the Disney Dream Job. It was hosted by them and Career Builder, where you can go and live out your dream for a weekend, pretending to be a pirate or a dancer or a princess, a jungle cruise skipper. And I, w- I wanted to enter the pirate category. It was something I did in our children's church. It's kind of a pirate who would come in and who would be like, ah, whatever you're talking about, it'll never work. Uh-huh. And the kids would correct the pirate, you know? Yeah. And uh So I was like, hey, this is a perfect dream job for me. I'll dress up as a goofy pirate, do a weird yo-ho, and see if I can win this thing. And uh, sure enough, I I became one of the five winners. Well, in the process of doing that, I was searching YouTube, and I'm like, hey, how about this idea, this name for a pirate? Well, most of the names I thought were cool were gone. And so I was like, I have to enter this contest. So I'll just be Kenny the Pirate. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, it wasn't a whole lot of like, you're the great creativity, except it was like, "Uh, I got to get this thing entered. (laughs) So you won the contest. You got to go to Disneyland and become a pirate for a day. How did that, how did that work? Oh, that was amazing. We, we actually got to go through the traditions class. We had wardrobe that came from the pirates of the Caribbean movie directly from the movie. And okay. the hat I was wearing was actually worn by an extra whose name was also Kenny. There you so go. I thought that was kind of a weird connection. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it, we actually get, we did rehearsals and we practiced what we were going to do on stage with this little show that we had to perform. And then after that, they were going to let us, they said, let us go for 15 minutes to go mess around with guests. Uh-huh. Well, it's, it's kind of hard to wrangle five crazy pirates. So it, 15 minutes turned into an hour. <laughs> <laughs> And then you had a show that you performed. There was that like a Mark Twain Island, or uh, yeah, it was yeah. there on the on the island uh, on the Tom Sawyer Island. We took the little raft over. And, you know, they had, back then, they had a Captain Jack Sparrow show that took place there on the stage, and okay, we got to be a part of that show. Gotcha. And they put you up and gave you some spending money, I assume, all that stuff. Yeah, they did. They put us in the Disneyland hotel, gave us five hundred dollar gift card that my wife and kids burned while I was playing pirate for a couple of days. <laughs> you mentioned your wife and kids. Give them a shout out. You got a, a, what are their names? Uh, my wife's name is Melinda. My okay. children are Jordan, Nathan, and Debbie, and they're all a pretty big integral part in what I do. Yeah, so everybody's as nuts about Disney as you, right? Pretty much, Pretty yeah. much? Okay. <laughs> so the way you came on my radar, Kenny, is uh, I've got a trip planned in late May. Uh, like, I, uh, my family and I go, usually we kind of rotate. We go to go to the world, 
one year and maybe we'll go to the land the next. So we'll kind of go back and forth between Florida and California, just depending on time of year and climate. It's it's nicer in California in July than it is in Florida, as you well know. But we're going yeah. this year, like maybe last week of May, first week of June, and I'm kind of looking at things. My daughter and I uh, tend to be the diehards. And like the last time we went, we did the Keys to the Kingdom tour, which was really neat. Um, mm -hmm. Got the behind the scenes stuff. And I was kind of looking at, well, what are some things that you could do? Disney sponsored or just challenges something that we might do and i bumped across this article that was titled how a father and daughter rode every ride in walt disney world in a single day and i went oh this this sounds interesting and that was <laughs> your article and what i found out it was called the wdw walt disney world 47 challenge do i have that right yeah, that's right. Hashtag WDW47. Okay. And I thought I started reading through it. And, and, and for those listening, you'll be able to find it on KennyThePirate.com. You know, we'll give you that information as we go through. But how did this even come on your radar? Um, is this something you invented, you you and your family? Or is this something people have been doing? I, I already knew that this existed. I didn't even knew it was possible that you could ride 47 <laughs> things in one day at, at four different parks. Well, it, it kind of came on our radar because my family and I have been doing crazy park challenges for the last several years we we started in 2010 doing what was called ultimate tours where you try to do as many things as you can in one theme park mm -hmm. and jordan and i actually got all the way up to 100 things in one day on the 24 hour day we did 100 characters shows rides all combined together in one day and uh, my brother and i tried to do a challenge similar to this 47 we kind of were inventing sort of a few years ago but we came up a little bit short because it was just downpouring on us. Mm -hmm. And then I guess in the course of just kind of piddling around on the internet, I came across it on Twitter mm -hmm. and I was following other people's attempts and most of them were unsuccessful. And I thought, well, I can do that. And I gave it a shot last December uh, in 2016, but it didn't quite work out. I was one attraction short, about six minutes short of completion. Oh no. And yeah, and so I was like, oh, man, I can't give up on this. Try. i got to get this thing. You know, you're competitive, so you, have to, yeah. you just have to do the most you can, you know? Uh -huh. And so I sat down with my daughter, Jordan, who, you know, we had done the 100 things one day. I said, what do you think? You, you think we can do this? And she's like, yeah, we can knock this out of the park. So she was excited to join in, and we set out to do it. So you did this, what was it, early December of, of 17, right? Yes. So for, for those listening, it, it's kind of dependent upon time of year. You just can't go down there any old day and pull this off. Explain explain what what that means yeah the rides all have to be working at the same time you, there can be no scheduled refurbishments in order to complete this challenge it was created by a group called parkeology mm -hmm. and they kind of formulated the rules and did a good job of kind of codifying what would what's a ride what isn't so, you know, basically if it's a moving attraction then it's considered a ride you can't do it anytime when there's a refurbishment uh, so that rules out a ton of different time of the year. I actually attempted it once in the summer. It was so insanely hot that I just said, you know, this isn't really worth it. Gotcha. <laughs> Since it was just too crazy hot. But December seems to be perfect because the rides are all working and the weather's nicer. And oh, and the park hours need to be right too. Kind of run down what some of the rules have to be for this thing. It's pretty much in. It has to be in the four parks in Disney World, mm -hmm. and it has to be a moving ride. So it can be something like Dumbo or even Carousel of Progress because you sit in it and it moves. Moves. Okay. Uh, People Mover, Buzz Lightyear, Space Mountain, uh, and that's how they come up with 47. It depends on how many rides are currently working. Like when they closed Great Movie Ride, that took the number down one. So if you know if they permanently close a ride, then it go, the number goes down. If they open new rides but don't close, the number goes up. Okay, but something like the Hall of Presidents or the American Adventure, that's a you're sitting in a theater. Animatronics are going on, but you're not moving. Doesn't count, correct? Yes, that would not count as a part of this challenge. Okay. But then there's some oddballs, right? Something you wouldn't necessarily think about as a ride, like uh, on Main Street, correct? Yeah, like the Main Street vehicles, which are like the curse for many people who are mm -hmm. trying this challenge. Uh, because they only run for a very limited amount of time in the morning. Mm -hmm. So you have to take one of the little cars or the trolley ride or the fire truck. Uh, another oddball would be the raft that goes across to Tom Sawyer Island and back. Okay. You don't have to necessarily get on the island. You just have to ride that raft. So you can ride it across, ride it back, and that counts. Yeah. And and I noticed uh, when I kind of found you, 
You have to document it. You just can't say you did it. You document it how. You have to take a photo on every attraction, and you have to upload a screenshot of any fast pass that you use with your names on it. Okay. So that proves that you were there. And then they also kind of ask now for the carousel ride, um, the Main Street vehicles, things like that, that you could jump on and jump off. They ask that you do a short video to kind of tip off that you actually were there. They don't force it, but they encourage it. So that way they can kind of make sure they score you. So how many people have completed this challenge, Kenny, over the years? I want to say at at the 47 ride level, I want to say there were six successful attempts. Mm Mm-hmm. At 46, there were probably another four or five, gotcha. something like that, when there were 46 rides. So what's the biggest part that went into you and your daughter, Jordan, uh, kind of coming up with the strategy for this? We talked about time of year. It had to be a time when the parks were operating at a pretty good hour level, and all the rides had to be running. So knowing all that's going to take place, what what are you doing, you know, to make sure you've got a good plan going into this? So what are what are you, you're not knocking them out one park at a time, are you? No, in our case, we had to bounce back and forth a little bit. Um, the Animal Kingdom to us was the highest priority. We needed to get Pandora done the first. New, the new land down there. Times, yeah. yeah, that can be three hours, and we wanted to use our fast passes and other rides. So we thought it would be best to do those. We we arrived probably six o'clock in the morning, and then waited and waited until it opened. And we were on the first set of uh, ride the ride vehicles for the Pandora Flight of Passage, the Avatar Flight of Passage ride, mm-hmm. and then hustled over to the Navi River with a very short wait over there. We chose to dart out then and get to the Magic Kingdom so we could make sure we got on one of those Main Street vehicles because we weren't positive that they would be out long some other teams decided to do a few rides in animal kingdom and then make their way to magic kingdom it helped some and hurt others <laughs> okay so th- this was a day when multiple teams were attempting is that right yeah this was what they ended up calling this uh what do they call it the uh, park nato they called it park nato because gotcha. there was so many different teams that were trying i think there were 13 or something like that teams that tried that day okay uh four teams succeeded and my daughter and i were the first to complete it so it's like the amazing race for disney world in a way yeah very much so it's very much like that especially since you know we're riding in our car and eating our peanut butter sandwich that we prepared in advance and (laughs) yeah yeah is there a prize for this or is it just self pride? No, we always talk about it being a clip art trophy. <laughs> <laughs> a clip art trophy. That's not bad. Yeah, it's That's just a good mention idea. on a website. That's all. <laughs> yeah. But you take a lot of pride in that, I'm sure. Cause, cause, uh, we do. Yeah. So then you were, you were there at, uh, you did the Animal Kingdom and then you hustled out and you said you went to, uh, Magic Kingdom because you had to get the Main Street vehicles out of the way. You know, how did that work? How many trips between parks did you guys have to make? Let's say we went Animal Kingdom. Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, uh, Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and then Magic Kingdom again to end. Okay. You ended at what time of day? You were up at 6, got there first thing, rope drop at Animal Kingdom. What time did you end in the Magic Kingdom? What was your last ride? Right around midnight. We The park actually had opened around 8 mm-hmm. at Animal Kingdom, and we finished our last ride. We were getting on right before 16 hours had expired. Okay. Now, I read – there's the blog of it again. If you find this article, again, if you want to search for it, it's how a father and daughter rode every ride in Walt Disney World in a single day. That will take them to your, your website, or you can just go to KennyThePirate.com. I noticed in there you used – tell me, was it 17, 19 different fast passes – I go to try to book them. I get three. How do you get more fast passes and, and and you're able to use that many in a single day? Part of the, the I guess, the, the trick is that you use your three fast passes and then you can continue in Disney World booking them one at a time after that. So what you'll want to do is what we call uh, tap, grab, and modify. Okay. So you tap at your third fast pass. And what you is- grab the fast pass for the attraction that you want to try for next. So I want to try for Buzz Lightyear. So I grab any time that it shows for Buzz Lightyear for two people. Then I modify that fast pass by continually tapping on the most current time to try to get that to, t- to give me the most recent or most current time possible. So you might even find something within one or two minutes of the current time if you keep doing that. So when you say tap, that's you've tapped in at the at the green at the little green Mickey head 
thing where you tap yeah. in with your with your uh, with your wristband, right? Your magic band. Yes. And then once you do that, you're immediately while you're still in line on your My Disney Experience app, and you're yes. finding the next fast pass. And then once you grab any fast pass, is what you're saying. You go to modify that, and hopefully you're going to find something sooner. Yeah, more than likely you will if you're willing to do just a little bit of work with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps when the smaller group, and it helps when the park isn't as crowded. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the park's really crowded and you have a large group, you're not going to get as many fast passes as 16 or 17 in one day. But you can certainly still come up with 7 or 8 or 10. This Disney dump fast passes just randomly, or it's like somebody had to cancel or miss or... Is that how they pop up? Is there a finite amount in the system? It's kind of both. There is a finite number, but you do see that there are sometimes whenever it does appear like, wow, where did all those fast passes come from? Like there was a major dump that occurred. Mm -hmm. And then there are other times where you're probably just grabbing something that someone else canceled throughout the day. Gotcha. So, so Kenny, you did this on, uh, you know, early December. I was reading and, and you finished the first challenge on, I think, December 6th, you said. And I noticed that it was like two weeks later, two and a half weeks later, you did the same typical or the same type challenge in Disneyland in California, and that's 55 rides, correct? Yeah, we did 55 rides in one day, and we did it about two and a half weeks after the previous attempt. And that was largely because of the people in my Facebook group that we call Kenny the Pirate Crew. Uh -huh. uh, I just kind of made a, a joke about it. I was like, hey, all these things are going to be closing next year. Wouldn't it be fun if I could go to California? Anyone got $1,000? And I mean, you know, no one's got $1,000, so it was just a joke. Yeah. And then people were like, well, I don't have a thousand, but here's 10. Well, I have 10. Let me throw in 10. And it got to like a couple of hundred dollars. And I was like, oh, you guys are serious. I was kidding. <laughs> and then they started messaging me and they're like, no, seriously, just post something and let other people see if they'll give. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And being short notice, you know, airline tickets are expensive and trying to find a hotel room on December the 23rd in Disneyland is not going to be the most reasonable. Honest, yeah. And yeah. And people just kept giving and giving and giving and ended up covering about two thirds of our costs to travel all the way to California to give it a shot. That's pretty awesome. So in Disneyland, that's two parks. There's Disneyland, the original, and then California Adventure. 55 rides between the two of those things. Probably a little easier. I, I've been there myself. It's a lot easier to get back and forth across. Which day was harder? They were just different, I think. Yeah. It, it, it's a different experience between the two. We definitely walk more with world because of how large the parks are. Uh -huh. I think we totaled around 20 miles walked where when we were in Disneyland, it was more like 16 miles. Okay. Um, but each one kind of requires their own strategy because Disneyland doesn't offer fast pass. Plus they have the paid $10 max pass option out there. Right. Yeah. So we had to kind of plan things out differently. Like we, our whole morning was front loaded with what we call slow loaders the rides that you want to get on and before the lines go crazy, like Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland, those fantasy land kind of rides. Okay. So we front loaded the morning with that. And then we started using fast passes. Are you the only people that have done the double where uh, you've hit both challenges? We are. We're the only, the only group that has even attempted the, ca the California version. And certainly because of that are the only group to complete both challenges. So you've got two clip art trophies in your, clip art trophy case then <laughs> you know right? i'm still waiting on that other <laughs> clip art trophy so <laughs> that's pretty gotta cool. talk to ted over there at parkeology and say hey where's my other clip art trophy man <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome uh um, we actually took the first one that you made for us and we hung it on our christmas tree oh really made it made an <laughs> ornament out of it that's pretty awesome <laughs> <laughs> so what other I mean you you've done both of these and, and I and we'll kind of go back to the world for a second and the big thing that's kind of happening there now is you've got Toy Story Land supposed to open this year and then the big one is Star Wars the next year which if I think there's two rides in each that's going to take uh, the the world challenge up to 51 and with the nature of those rides and those intellectual properties you think that's going to be possible? With them continually reducing the number of park hours available, if they're actually 51 at that time, it would be extremely difficult because you would be dealing with Pandora, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, and Star Wars Land. Mm -hmm. And that Star Wars is probably going to be enormous. It's probably going to dwarf Pandora in the sense of how long people are willing to tolerate uh, a ride line, four hours, six yeah. hours. I got high confidence in you, though, Kenny. 
If anybody's going to figure it out, it might be you. I'm, I'm calling it. I think you're going to be able to get the WDW 51 when that happens. My, my faith is in you. <laughs> if they get that many rides available for us, we'll give it a shot for you. Hey, everyone. Quick reminder, before we get back to the rest of the interview, I want to give a shout out to one of our partners, Ageless Apparel. They make a lot of great t-shirts, a lot of great products. If you've got an organization or just want to get some t-shirts made for your special event or occasion, give those folks a shout. You can find them on Facebook under Ageless Apparel. Just search Ageless Apparel. You'll find it. Austin and those folks will get back to you real quick. Quick turnaround time, quality products. Love those guys a lot and great partners of me here on the What's That Like podcast. They make all of my t-shirts for me and do a great job. Thanks a lot. Let's get back to the interview. You know, you're a Disney insider, so to speak. You've got the website, KennyThePirate.com. You've got an app we'll talk about as well um, called Character Locator. A lot of expansion going on. There's construction. Like I said, two lands going to open at Hollywood Studios. Um, they've got Skyliners coming in. There's a big talk about an Epcot redo. Um, mm-hmm. What are the things that you're hearing? Like, is, is uh, Toy Story supposed to open maybe like Memorial Day weekend this year? Yeah, I've been predicting Memorial Day since last fall. I'm going to stand with that. I really feel strongly that that's the, the point in time that they're looking to try to make their grand opening, and it seems like they're on course for that right now. Yeah, and Star Wars, it seems in Florida, it's lagging behind California. That might be a fall of 19 open. Is that what you're hearing as well? Yeah, the, the talk on the street from Disney is they're looking at like trying to get it around Thanksgiving or Christmas. Okay. But it really depends on the weather over the next year and a half. If we have a lot of bad weather, it could delay that into spring of 2020 even. But mm-hmm. they're going to try really hard to get it open by the end of 2019. All right. And at the same time, you've got the Guardians ride going into where Ellen's Energy Adventure was in Epcot. There's a uh, something going on at the France Pavilion, the Ratatouille ride that they're bringing yeah, over from Disneyland Paris. What are some of the things that, that you're most excited about and what the Disney Corporation's doing in the parks? Tron. Tron. <laughs> Tron in the Magic Kingdom. That sounds exciting to me. Yeah. And that's a, that's an import from, is it Shanghai Disneyland? Yeah, from Shanghai Disney. Okay. And that's a that's a, that's a coaster based on the Tron intellectual property, uh, obviously. Uh, what makes you most excited about that? Just another roller coaster? I just, I love the music and the look from Tron, the, the newer version of the Tron movies. I love the way that they made those appear. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've only seen video of the Shanghai ride, so actually getting a chance to go and ride on it seems really, uh, really fun to me. Yeah. And then I'm not sure what they're going to exactly create for Guardians of the Galaxy, but that that's probably going to be a lot of fun, too, as being sort of a roller coaster ride that goes in and indoors and outdoors. So that that's probably a lot of fun. I've seen the Ratatouille ride in Paris before, and it's a cute ride, but those other two are definitely higher on my list. Is Star Wars your well, coup de gras? I love I love Star Wars, but I'm gonna have to wait and see. I guess which is which. Well, I love a good roller coaster, and I love a good dropping ride. So that versus maybe more of a screen presentation. I'm probably going to lean more to the physical experience. Gotcha. Yeah, because I think the the Millennium Falcon is supposed to be more of a kind of a 3D screen experience. Is that right? Yeah, I believe both of them are going to have an element of some sort of flat screen with you in a vehicle experience. Uh, Tell me, Kenny, I mean, you know, you've been going there forever. I mean, you probably couldn't even put a number of number of days you've been at the park. Am I right? Oh, wow. (laughs) It would probably be more like in the number of years that I've actually spent in the park. (laughs) So so what's your favorite ride that's now gone? that uh, you'll you'll never get to experience again. Wow. Now, see, that one, you caught me off guard on that question. I didn't expect that one. See, it's my favorite ride that's gone. I would say Alien Encounter. Okay. I mean, that seems like a reach maybe, but I love that ride. I thought it was awesome. I mean, it scared everyone to death, but I thought it was a great ride. And it's been replaced with? Stitch, Stitch. which (laughs) is partially closed. Yeah. So I wouldn't have expected that answer either, but it's a good answer. I remember riding that back in the uh, the nineties, and uh, I think it was when it was open before they ported it over to something else. And yeah, it was. I think I have a crappy VHS recording of that I made myself <laughs> that is not very good, but uh, no, great answer there. What do you make of you know just kind of the redevelopment? Uh, some of the things they're doing with, uh, with partic- in particular, Epcot. It seems like a reimagining. It, 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 is it in need of an update? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's sadly in need of an update. It seems like it got left in the 1980s, mm-hmm. and everyone moved beyond it, maybe early 90s. So 
it could definitely use a lot of infusion and love. I, I think sometimes as fans, we get a little over overdone with the IP, you know, the intellectual property approach rather than the uh, original idea. But at least they're investing finances, time, and they're going to try to build more quality attractions there. So I think that's a positive thing for that part. Kenny, switching gears a little bit, what are the things that when you walk around and you see people walking around and you go, but maybe two or three tips that you could give listeners that when you watch them walk through, you just go, gee, rookies, they have no idea what they could be doing. What, what are some of those things? You know, it's funny because one day I was walking into Epcot and there was a long line forming to, to board Spaceship Earth right at park opening. Mm-hmm. And I actually posted something to that effect on uh, on, my, on my Facebook page, something like, you know, oh, look at the rookies lining up. Well, I learned the hard way that some people took offense to that, but because <laughs> <laughs> they're like, that's my favorite ride in the whole world. I was like, oh, so sorry. <laughs> but that's... That, you know, in the terms of what's more important, that's definitely a rookie move. I mean, you're going to want to go to, to Soarin' Test Track or Frozen, use Fast Pass for one of the other ones. Because you could ride Spaceship Earth at 5 o'clock and no one will be there. Yeah, it's generally a walk-on from, af- you know, mid-afternoon on because everybody's moved their way back into the park. And, and and it's funny you say that because I've said the same thing walking in into the, into there. And Spaceship Earth is one of our favorite rides in my family. We uh, <laughs> be, and because thank we the can, Phoenicians. Yes, I was just going to say that. We thank the Phoenicians every time. Uh, what else? <laughs> what, what else pops up in your head is, you know, just – kind of general the, the easiest things people could do to improve their experience a lot of people think that they're going to just tour in a circle mm-hmm. i'm just going to head in this direction and make a big circle but the problem is is on the other side of the park is another attraction that has a really long wait time so you do have to do some pre-planning for how you're going to use those fast passes if you're going to target some rides early in the morning without fast pass and then mid-morning Use the fast passes in the afternoon. Continue to do what we said with the tap, grab, and modify strategy. Mm-hmm. So you can get some of those easier fast passes like your Buzz Lightyear or your Monster Inc., uh, Dumbo, things like that. You can get much more readily in the park. But, yeah, I think a lot of people tend to think, well, I'll just go in a big circle. And they fail after about 40 minutes. They're like, oh, this, these lines are crazy. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite thing to do? I mean, I'm sure it varies, but... You know, if uh, if you were going there tomorrow, what what's your favorite thing to do if you're not going to be able to go back for a while? If I'm if I'm not in like a challenge type mode at all, and I just want to relax, sometimes I'll just go sit in town square, mm-hmm. right in front of the train station, and just kind of people watch. Yeah, because it's fun to see those people's eyes just come alive when they see the Cinderella Castle for the first time, mm-hmm. and it's just amazing to them. Wow, look at this, we're here. It's kind of fun to go back to that moment whenever I was that guy in 1990 who walked in and said, this is amazing. Yeah. So that, that to me is interesting. And then sometimes I might go in and just kind of meet some characters or another day I might just want to enjoy some shows. It just varies. I try to keep things different. And that's part of the fun of the challenge aspect is to be able to change things up. Yeah. Uh, I, I know what you're saying about the people watching. It was probably maybe it was two years ago, springtime. We had gone down in March and uh, it was our last day. And we had kind of gone in and uh, gone in early. The kids wanted to ride a couple more things. And, and my kids are old enough that, you know, you let them go. Hey, you want to go ride Splash Mountain? Go ahead. Go run from one side to the other. And my wife and I had gone down uh, Main Street. And we took the took the right-hand turn, I guess, back into that little alley that uh, just kind of ro- off the side of Main Street there. And we sat at a little mm-hmm. table. And it was empty there. And you just saw the masses of people moving down that street. And uh, just a great day to people watch. You just can't believe the amount of folks that flow through that place. You kind of feel like you're in a little French bistro. Yeah. You just need a ham and cheese sandwich. Yeah. Well, in that <laughs> little alley, too. If you have never, if, if you go to the park, and, and I'm sure you know this because you're, you're a Disney guy. But if you go into that little alley and you sit down, you look up at the windows, and it's got like the singing lessons window. If you sit underneath that window, you hear somebody up there, la 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 la. You know they're giving the they're <laughs> they take they're doing their warm ups and getting lessons, and that's that's to me why it is so thematically great down there. They they think of all the little things to make it feel like you are in that bubble. That it really is a cool thing. I agree with you. That's yeah. what makes it unique. That's what makes it special. Yeah. So, so Kenny, the, you've got the website, KennyThePirate.com. What, if, if people will go to KennyThePirate.com, what are the kind of things they're going to find? Why would they want to go there? 
you know, one of the primary things that people enjoy about the site is the crowd calendar mm -hmm. so that they can go in and quickly see what the park hours are, which parks can have extra magic hours, uh, you know, what sort of crowd level they might expect whenever they get there at a given time. Uh, another aspect would be the character planning so that they could be able to locate their characters that they want. Uh, and that's what spun off from that site to the other site that you mentioned earlier, which is characterlocator.com. Right, right. It became a real full planning tool, not just an overview for the park, but actually how to walk you through how to tour the park step by step. Okay. Let's break that down a little bit here. Uh, first thing you mentioned was the crowd calendars. I, I go to your site and I look at that. So um, we've made dinner reservations. Um, at this point, we're more than 60 days out, but we've made the dinner reservations now based on your, your crowd calendar and, and looking at in terms of, okay, this is the heavy day. We might want to go here versus there. I love that because it feels like I've got a got a little bit of an insider's view on what to do that day to kind of avoid some of those crowds, because I'm sure, as you would say, too, there there really are no slow times. It's just less busy. Is that is that accurate? By and large, yeah. There are a few weeks in the year now that we can have some really nice slow weeks, but those are becoming far and few between, <laughs> few and far between. So you predict this stuff. How? What goes into your thought process or your analytics for you to determine what those levels might be and how you publish that. Well, the number one factor is always going to be what school holiday you're looking at. If there's a large school holiday that's going to attract a large number of people, uh, whether or not the economy is strong in, in other markets, you have to look and see what it looks like in Europe or what it looks like in South America. Okay. Because like over the last couple of weeks, it's been a little stronger here because of the South American market. Another major factor to me is looking at hotel bookings. Okay. Because there's actually availability to see what goes on in the hotels and conventioneers and see what sort of plans they're making for the future. And those kind of pull all that together and, and get an idea, a rough idea at least, of what the park's going to be like. Gotcha. So you're, you're not just guessing it based on... Well, it was busy on the the Friday after Memorial Day last year. It'll be busy this year. You're looking at what's going on that week, what schools have let out, as you said, and you're using uh, you're using the the hotel bookings as kind of a basis to to gauge demand as well. I got that right. That's correct. And even then, honestly, even then, sometimes we can miss things because Disney themselves would plan sometimes for a really short day, nice lower crowds, and then. Where did all these people come from? <laughs> so sometimes that still happens to you. But being in the best park that day is going to position you in a good place. But even more important than that, I always tell people is having the best plan. When I look at your site, maybe this is a tip. I'll let you explain it. Extra magic hours, good thing or bad thing for Crowdflow? For the number of people who are going to show up in a park on a given day, it's a really bad thing. Between 30% and 100% higher crowd. If you're actually going to go in, say, for the early magic hour, use that hour and then dart out around lunch, go to another park or go to the pool, you're, you've come out ahead because that actual extra magic hour can be a big benefit to you if you use it properly. Okay. But if you if you don't, then you could end up in a much worse situation. Again, I look at your site and I look at those extra magic hours and, and run the other way. Character locator. How did that start? Why did you start something that has characters? Doesn't Disney do that already? The character aspect really began because of my oldest daughter, Jordan. She was such a passionate person when it came to wanting to meet characters every time we came. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a great deal of research trying to scavenge the Internet in 2004 and see what was available and who's meeting where and asking a million questions. And then you make friends with some cast members while you're here and they're, you know, oh, well, when you come back, don't forget to meet this character. They're going to be here when you come. And then I noticed that when I started the website about six or seven years ago, there was no real solid place to go and find that information, that you couldn't find schedules, interaction tips, you know, kind of how to play with the characters beyond just getting an autograph and a book. Okay. And so it started as just an app that you downloaded in an Android store with only the characters, schedules, and tips. And then we've grown it beyond that to a full planning site with a crowd calendars, the chat room, the full touring plans. Some include characters and shows and rides. Others are rides only. It just has a full set of tools now. Okay. And you can use that to really, like I'm doing, plan plan your trip. Yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, you can just copy the plan that I have 
book the same fast passes and you'll have the same success that I would have had the same day. Gotcha. And is this for, for our listeners? Cost? How do, how do you break that down? It's nine ninety nine right now for a full year subscription, mm-hmm. and that includes the use for Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, and Disneyland. Okay, so all three you've got it in there. And how do you get your information? Ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you got to pay, right? <laughs> a lot of research. A lot of research. <laughs> a lot of things you're doing. That's great. And, you know, a, a good answer. You know, we don't need to know everything <laughs> there is to know about uh, about all that stuff. So, um, you can go to KennyThePirate.com, CharacterLocator.com. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And then people can follow you on various social media and things like that as well, right? Yeah, they're linked uh, on my Kenny the Pirate website. You'll find those on the right-hand side in the desktop view or scroll down the page below the content, and you'll see it there as well for Facebook, Twitter, uh, those sort of things. Well, you know, Kenny, uh, great to talk to you. One of the things I like to do on my show, and I do it at the end because I feel like we've broken down a barrier. Now you and I are we're like best friends, of course. So I, I always like to ask a bunch of questions to kind of get to know Kenny, the person, a little bit more. What's the most right. embarrassing app you have on your phone? Oh, wow. I don't know. I don't have a whole I'm, – I'm real kind of logistical kind of person. No game, no silly – you know, Not really. I mean, I'm like yeah. Sudoku, Mahjong, uh, I mean, Instagram. I, I don't know. I don't really. You got me there because I can't think of anything. <laughs> well, so it basically means you're comfortable with yourself. Nothing's embarrassing, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay. So we'll go to the next one. What song do you sing in the car when no one's looking? You know all the words, too. And you're just belting it out. Oh, I mean, it has to be a journey song. Journey? I mean, you can pick it. Yeah, you can pick any Journey song. You got to sing that, right? You you turn the volume up and blast it out. (laughs) Screaming, you know. (laughs) Anything by Journey is a good answer. Yeah, and and those are good songs as well. Don't stop believing. Don't stop, baby. Don't stop. Maybe that leads into my next question. What would Kenny now go back in time to 10-year-old Kenny and, uh, and tell him? What advice would you give yourself at 10 years old? that you look at your life immediately now and it seemed like my life at times was pretty hard as a child, but the things that I've learned and grown from since then, don't ever give up on your dream. Yeah. Don't quit. You know, because there's so many people who give up too early. They, they like with the Kenny, the pirate thing, there were times when I was like, "Ah, I mean, who cares? No one's really clicking on this stuff. You know, you just kind of get to a point where you think that it, you're not making any difference. Mm-hmm. And then just the other day, I was in the in the park for a DVC event, and this lady just totally freaked out. She was like, <laughs> "Oh my God, it's Kenny the Pirate!" And she's like, "You know, her kid had to get her mom to take her photo together." And, you know, you, the tough times they're worth it when you get through them. That's awesome. Good, good advice. This one's a little more fun. What TV show would Kenny White? be a character in probably in the office the office yeah <laughs> yeah I'd probably end up in the office right the the whole group of misfits who just they're trying really hard and they just constantly screw up like that that kind of i don't know seems to fit me pretty well that's a great answer you know i've probably done 16 <laughs> 17 shows and that seems like the most obvious answer to give and nobody's given it so congratulations to you that's <laughs> <Thanks>. awesome <laughs> Last question is is what I, you know just kind of this or that Coke or Pepsi style. It's kind of five quick things. So uh, Disney related for you, Kenny. I made these up just for you. Old test track or new test track? Old test track. Why? Uh, th- that's a classic attraction. The smell of the grease, the actual working car parts and testing versus just riding sort of a passive ride yeah, I, I like the old version much better see i would agree with you and then after you told me you were looking forward to the tron coaster i thought oh maybe he'll go with new test track because it's very tronish in look <laughs> we call it tron track but yeah. i think tron by itself is good but just not in test track gotcha and so this is a similar question here i know you did it at the disneyland uh the guardians uh, Mission Breakout, the old Tower of Terror. So the new Guardians Tower versus the current tower that's in uh, Florida. Tower of Terror versus Guardians Mission Breakout. Okay, if I'm comparing it to its old self, I would go with the new ride. Mm-hmm. If I'm comparing it to Walt Disney World, I'll go with Walt Disney World's Tower of Terror. 
They are different. Well, they were different. California, yeah. it's better than what used to exist in that park. Yeah, because the, the the ride vehicle didn't move out of the shaft in uh, yeah. in in Disneyland. But yeah, I got to tell you, I was real skeptical of the Guardians ride. I love the Guardians, but uh, riding it out there, I went, no, this is this is a way better experience than it used to be out here. But I'm very. I hope they never change the one in uh, in in Florida. I got a fear they will because they don't own that intellectual property. So. Uh, next. I agree with you. I hope not. That's my favorite ride. Great. Uh, so we, you kind of hit on this before, and I think I know what your answer is going to be. Characters, intellectual property in Epcot or no? Oh, yeah. I, I think Epcot has the place for characters as long as they're within their environment. I mean, you see Snow White in Germany and Mulan belongs in China. I mean, if you're going to put joy and sadness in, in the middle of Japan, that would just be silly. Mm-hmm. So that wouldn't make any sense. But if you keep more of the characters as they are now in, in the front part in the future world area, that's okay because they have sort of a character spot for them. But, yeah, if you're going to mix them into the world, it's better if you actually tag them to where they belong. This was kind of a uh, Space Mountain versus Big Thunder Mountain versus Splash Mountain. I'm going to go with Thunder Mountain. Yeah? Th- yeah, Thunder Mountain's fun. I like Thunder Mountain a lot. Yeah. Disneyland, the original, versus the Magic Kingdom. I think I would probably spend more time in Disneyland if I were near there. If you put them side by side, I would probably spend more time in land. It Walt was there. It it's has Walt's more park. attractions per square foot. Yeah. Uh, the only downside for that park is the tiny castle. It just looks like it looks more like an apartment compared to <laughs> Cinderella Castle. That's true. It is small, much smaller. Was it <laughs> Le- less than a hundred feet tall? Whereas Cinderella Castle is what, what like one ninety or something like that, one eighty nine. Yeah, nearly two hundred. Yeah, I would agree with you uh, totally. And I had never been to Disneyland until I want to say twenty fourteen or fifteen. And it is my favorite Disney park. You know, I, I like Disney World because there's a lot more to do and you're in the bubble. But Disneyland itself, I, I, I like a lot of that. You tell me, I, you take, like, say, Big Thunder Mountain. You like it better in Florida or California? California, California. more detail. Yeah, same with Pirates, I would say. Space Mountain yeah. I like better out there. Um, some of the others are, oh, are kind of the same. But, uh, yeah, I, I do enjoy it. In, in Indiana Jones ride. Versus dinosaur in Florida, same ride track, no, no question. Indy yeah. wins. Yeah, Indy wins. Well, that's interesting. So, Kenny, anything we haven't talked about that uh, you'd like to get out there, promote, uh, anything at all? Well, there's something we're actually launching tomorrow morning oh, that I hadn't even mentioned to you. An exclusive um, on the What's That yeah. Like podcast. <laughs> Joining together tomorrow with my one of my good friends, Lisa, and we're launching a travel agency. Uh, that's called Mouse Class Travel, so awesome. that we can help people plan their vacations well. Uh, I had partnered with a variety of, or, or you know, allowed other agencies to advertise on my site over the last several years. Uh-huh. Saw some positives, saw some things that could use some improvement, and thought, you know, for the people that we actually can help ourselves, maybe we can do this pretty well. Okay. And so we're going to try to help as many people as we can to plan the best Disney vacation possible. And, and give the name of that again. That'll be called mouseclasstravel.com. Mouseclasstravel.com. We'll get a link to it. I'll post it on the show notes. So you're going to be able to help people book from flights to reservations to lodging to the fast pass help. And it'll integrate all of your knowledge in getting that done, right? That's right. Every detail, all the way through, every step will be covered for you. And, and is this is one of the types of, of services that doesn't cost the, the consumer any more to work through you than it does to go direct, and they might as well use you. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the way that we see it. If it's going to cost the same price and you're getting a better value, why not use someone who knows what they're doing so that you can we, – we look at we say, you work, we well, you play, we work. Awesome. Awesome. Kenny, I want to thank you for coming on. It's a great pleasure. I probably will get more out of this than any of my listeners. I'm a, I'm that big of a <laughs> kind of a Disney geek with this stuff and uh, hope to see you down there sometime. I'll be in, uh, I'll be like, I'll be in Epcot on the 23rd of, of February, just for the day, uh, my wife and I, and then uh, we'll be back there that first week of June. So uh, maybe I'll ping you on Twitter and we can get a nice photo together or, or something like that. Sounds Cause like fun. you're the only character I really want to meet my friend oh that was very <laughs> kind of you thank you yeah uh well thanks a lot and uh really appreciate it thanks for having me on 
Well, there you had it. That was Kenny the Pirate. Uh, great show, wasn't it? I mean, if you like Disney, you're really going to love it. If you don't like Disney or you've never been, maybe you didn't get as much out of it. But he's just such a cool guy that did a lot of cool things. And he's really uh, trying to make a difference uh, with all those folks like me that really just enjoy a Disney vacation and everything that goes along with it. Thanks a lot to Kenny once again for coming on the show. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, again, you can find him at KennyThePirate.com, CharacterLocator.com. And then just search Facebook for Kenny the Pirate, and uh, he's on Twitter there as well. I think you'll find him on there. Always posting something fun. He's got a lot of things going on. It's a great site. I go there a lot because he he keeps up with news. So if things are going on at, at the parks, uh, and and you know there's something trending in terms of a new experience or something that's going to change that might affect travelers down there, he's real good about posting those things. He'll update the crowd calendar. As things come online, he might, he might notice that there's a convention in town, and he'll go back and change those things. So it's not just set once a year. He really helps you kind of plan those things out. I use it to really plan uh, the days that I spend in the park as well. So once again, thanks a lot to Kenny, and uh, look forward to meeting him hopefully someday in person. Let me uh, transition now. Uh, my friend Greg Shively, who I know you've heard me talk about before, actually stood in line for It's a Small World for over three hours one time. And uh, and then he got on the ride and it broke down. And that, that song stuck in that poor guy's head forever. So I want to get him on the phone and let him tell you all about the horrors hey, are you done of It's again? a Small World. What? Time to wrap it up. All right, dude. Sorry. Once again, we got to cut you off. We're out of time. Bob says so. I got to listen to Bob. He's the producer. So Again? With that being said, this was the What's That Like podcast. I was your host, John Knowles. We'll see you next time. Peace out. What's That Like is available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Search for What's That Like. Subscribe today and never miss an episode. Streaming is available at SoundCloud.com and on the SoundCloud app. Follow What's That Like at Facebook.com slash What's That Like podcast. And on Twitter at What's That Like pod. All opinions of the guests of the What's That Like podcast are their own, not necessarily the views of the host or the podcast producers. We hope you enjoy this podcast serving Central Illinois and beyond. Peace out!